muscle bag with Gwinnett lawns and beautiful. Ooh, look at that sky in the summer. Look at it, crystal clear. Atlanta, Georgia. Today is August the 21st, it's Monday, 2023. And I'm just gonna start off with the question. When is it too hot to mow or work? So let me show you what we have on track for this week. If you can see that today, 95, 97, 97, 98, 98, 98, 90. I don't know if you can see that. Am I complaining? Mm-mm. Because I know come December, <laughs> you guys are going to hear me talk about how cold and how much I hate the cold. So, yeah, when is it too hot for you to work? Now, it's about it's 7... 722 right now and as you can see up oh, there's no mower in the back of that truck so what i'm going to do is i have a bush job that i have to do that has a due date on it meaning the customer wants it done by uh, tomorrow and i figured i because i don't normally do bush stuff when i have a full day of mowing uh, but because it's nice and cool right now. It's probably, I don't know, 70 degrees maybe. And the grass is still heavy with dew. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the bush job out now because um, it's gonna be hot. And I'd rather go ahead and get that out of the way um, so my mind is, is not focused on bush stuff. You can see that ridge, see the sun shining on the ridge over there. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful week. There's east. Sun hadn't even popped up over the horizon. So yeah, when is it too hot for you to work? Is it, uh, or is it a non-issue? I know that, <clears throat> especially the guys in, um, in Florida and maybe, I don't know, out in the, out in the heartland of the country, they have... Well, they have been having hotter temperatures than we've been having here in Atlanta. And um, I don't know what the feels like is going to be, but it will probably be well above 100. And that's okay. Again, as I told you guys last year, the key is to stay hydrated i know that sounds cliche but i knew this week was coming this will be the hottest week of the year for us here so far and uh, august and september can be brutal brutal it probably won't rain much uh, it's gonna start the bermuda if it stays this hot without any rain it's going to really slow the growth down thank goodness uh, June and July we get a lot of rain here but the humidity is higher so hopefully the humidity will be a little lower that will help but I've got an entire cooler it's packed full of water Gatorade electrolyte drinks gotta have it there has to be you have to find that fine balance of uh, you definitely don't want to drink too much that is almost as bad as drinking not enough uh, they're both bad but just make sure you get um, I carry sea salt with me you guys have seen in other videos and we'll take a little bit of sea salt not regular table salt mm -mm. sea salt it's got all the minerals in it that you uh, that you need and your body helps to deal with the sodium chloride. You don't just want table salt, so don't do that. But I'm not a big fan of using chemicals, Gatorade and stuff, but it does help. Uh, I will I also have a can of coconut water in there, but mostly what I drink is water. So, yep. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head to the job. I will show you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna video the job. I'll show you uh, the before and after is what I'm gonna do. It's a bed of bushes in the front, and it's a hill in the back. It's got. It's got a lot of fire ants. This has been the worst year for fire ants. I've been getting eaten up, but I have to weed eat the hill, and then I have to uh, do the junipers, the bushes and stuff, get it nice and cleaned up. So I am going to go ahead there and I'll show you guys what it looks like before and then after. All right, so here is a pick of the front. Thankfully, this is in the shade right now, but not for long. See these big old Laura Pedlums? And we got quite a bit of bushes in there. All right, so I will... Uh, get this done and then show you guys what the backyard looks like all right here's the backyard I have to weed eat and trim these bushes up it's a mess well to add insult to injury with the heat I uh, got stung by some wasps but I will uh, let you guys see. Took me like 25 minutes to weed eat this mess down. But uh yeah, and these junipers up here. And there was a nest of babies too. It's this one right here, this sucker right there, but I don't have anything to spray them with. And you know I weed eated it fine. And uh it was when I was actually trimming the junipers with this hedge trimmer that they came out. There was, there's a nest in this big one right here, near the fence. I saw them and ran out of there. And then I weed eated the uh, little bush over there, little juniper, and it was too late. I felt it before I saw them. That's the bad thing about these blue rug junipers, man. The wasps love to make nests in there. Man, tell you what, I should have done that back hill first. <laughs> I, I, uh, I saw this delicious shade up here. Look, it's still in the shade. Over here. I saw this shade, and I was like, I'm going to go do this first. That was the wrong choice. Russell, you chose incorrectly. But, yeah, it would have been better. So, there it is. Took me this whole job. Let me see. I'm at an hour and 45 minutes. So, not too bad. These are really overgrown this time. I think last time it took me in Dallas not even uh, not even an hour, like maybe 45 minutes, about half the time. Ooh, I need to hydrate, man. I feel like a my shirt feels like it's I was in a pool. Somebody threw me in the lake or something. And it's not even hot. Like, there's a little bit of a slight breeze blowing, and uh, it is very humid. But, yeah, it's just, it's whacked up, man. So, let's see, what time is it? It is 9, almost 9.30. So... The rest of the day will be mowing my normal route and uh, for me for me um, that's far far more enjoyable I don't mind doing bushes I just don't like trying to it, it's very irritating that I can't get all the clippings out of the mulch um, 
and this is old mulch too so I can rake it and then I can blow it out the best I can I got an entire it's probably about 40 pounds contractors bag from the front ain't I'm not doing anything to the back I hope hopefully those uh, the weed debris will slow the weeds from coming back and uh, you guys ever have fences like this it's just dilapidated I have to push up on this Also, don't forget, hedge clipper maintenance, always spray WD-40 or some type of penetrating oil on there to displace the moisture. It will make your clippers, your trimmer edges last a lot, lot longer and they won't rust. You should never ever have any type of rust on your hedge trimmers. Really, after every time you use them, you should spray the front, the back, the sides, run it, cycle it a few times so that they oscillate and then do it again and then put them up in the uh, case. Whatever brand you have, it doesn't matter, gas or electric. Um, and that'll just make your stuff last longer. Oh well. All right, I'm gonna put the rest of this up and I'll see you guys back in the truck. Ooh. All right, <laughs> I came home, unloaded my bush stuff and got my mowing stuff. I sure do miss my box truck. I love, I, I love this mow and go. This mow and go is awesome. I highly recommend it, but I'm going to tell you, it does work with a short bed truck because I've been doing it for two years like this, but I miss my box truck. All my stuff, I got all that stuff, all my hedge trimming and edging, extra stuff, all my tools, extra mowers, extra mower. All that stuff fits perfectly fine and nice and neat in the box truck. I don't remember ever having to come home to get anything unless I just wanted to. I mean, I'm never really very far from the house anyway, but ooh, my calf is really starting to hurt now. Those, those, uh, I think I got stung twice. Mm, I'm going to tell you something. The worst sting is a bald face hornet as far as initial hurt. My little tree in the front yard right here, this little ginkgo tree, I was push mowing my own yard, minding my own business. I didn't see that there was a cantaloupe sized hornet's nest uh, about six feet high off the ground. I went under there with my push mower. Wham! In my back, it felt like somebody shot me with a shotgun. I took off running. I knew I got hit by something. I turned around and looked, and I just happened to see that hornet's nest. And I, I got a video. We, me and Steve, we took care of it with some brake parts cleaner. Did them in immediately. But anyway, um, the fur that hurts the worst. Then it would be a yellow jacket and then probably a wasp. These, those red paper, I call them paper wasps. They make those little uh, just open cell paper. They like bushes and they like getting in the corner of your, under your eaves of your house and stuff. <clears throat> and um, but I'm gonna tell you something, out of all those, 
the one I don't want to run across, oh good gracious no, is, a, is the ground yellow jackets. Make the holes about that big. Unless you just happen to be fortunate to see them before you go over them. If you run over them with the mower or you step over it, oh good gracious, you're you're going to get stung multiple times by multiple. And I don't care how fast you run, you can go darn near 100 yards before they'll stop chasing you. Wasps, they're not as aggressive. They'll, I mean, what, what I don't understand is I was up there at that bush weed eating for, in that corner for several minutes because the weeds were so tall up there. I should have done a video. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm testing out some new string, and it is absolutely it decimates weeds. Just absolutely. All right, there's a see that sucker right there. That's a yellow. That's a paper wash. That's a full size one right there. The ones I saw were babies. They were smaller. But anyway, uh, this new string that I'm trying out. Oh, son, let me tell you something. Let me tell you that if you have some overgrown weeds, it is the absolute best string I have ever used for doing heavy, thick, nasty weeds that no other string will cut. It's .130 like all the rest of them. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I'm going to do a little bit more testing. But let me tell you something. The weeds on that hill that I did, some of them were four feet tall. They were thick. They were wet. They were matted up against the fence. My 2620, it was struggling. I'm going to tell you the perfect combination will be this string and an Echo 3020T. That's right, a 3020T. The, um, the 2620T is the perfect trimmer as far as weight to power, power to weight ratio. And that's the uh, trimmer right here. This one's got 289 hours on it already. And um, I'm going to tell you something. I have done some, some yards, some overgrown yards and overgrown weeds that this 2620, it, was just, it doesn't have enough power. Uh, and this thing's got a lot of power. For maintenance work, uh, this is all you ever need. If you're only gonna, if you're only gonna have one trimmer, get the 2620T. But if you can, and you have the means, save your money, and also get you a 3020T. I don't have one yet, but I will. You know why? Because, and I've got the new design bracket here. I designed this different to have a so it locks in. I uh, got a little bit different setup. I bent it differently, uh, but I, I think I'm gonna. I like this because it will lock the trimmer in and it will prevent it from rolling. And I won't have to use the bungee to hold it, and I won't have to use those foam anyway. Different design, different video, but uh, yeah, I should put a 3020T on here, right? Don't you think so? But yeah. I can't really, well, I could put, I could put another trimmer where my magnetic rack is. That's usually if I put my lightsaber, I call my lightsaber my, my, my one bush, articulating bush trimmer. But anyway, um, yeah, that string, oh man, it makes this 2620T feel a lot stronger. And it's good, oh, it's good string. Now, I don't particularly like it for edging. It's not better than the low noise. And I don't particularly like it for uh, just regular trimming. It's not that good. But let me tell you something. If you're cutting down some thick, nasty weeds, I mean some thick ones, I got some stuff that the low noise... I would have had a lot of trouble if I used the low noise up there. It's just not, I mean, low noise is good. It's the best trimmer line out there to do what you're going to need to do on a daily basis. But 
I mean, I could have got it done. It would have taken a lot longer. That, that string probably saved me 15 minutes that I'm using now. 15 minutes. So, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm talking with you guys because I don't really want to go. But let me tell you something. I'm going to be honest here. Let me see what what kind of temperature we got right now. Let me give you a me give you a temperature update. The temperature here is now. Oh, it's hotter than 71. You gotta be oh, come on. Refresh. Well. I don't know, man. I'm guessing it's 80 something. This very Whoa! I feel good. So I finished up around five o'clock. I'm headed. I dumped the uh I didn't dump. I took all my equipment off the truck and put it uh back to uh, the garage and I'm headed to get some fuel and go to the grocery store. It got up to 94 degrees today, and the fuel like is 99. So it didn't get, I thought it was going to get 96, but it didn't. Um, still full sun. There was some high clouds floating around for about, I don't know, 45 minutes. It looked like it was going to rain, but that dissipated. I have, uh, I want to show you guys something that I found, I didn't know about this, I've been testing it. This is Gatorade Fit. Um, it's a little more expensive than regular Gatorade, but it doesn't have all that artificial crap. So I drank two of these, I drank one regular Gatorade Zero and a ton of water. So. Uh, I'm going to get some more of those at the grocery store. Gatorade Fit. Pretty good. It tastes really good. And um, I didn't bring... Well, I, my cooler still has a little bit of ice. It's mostly water. I still have my coconut water I'm going to drink probably on the ride home from the fueling station. But, uh, yeah, it was a very good day. I did six yards and the bush job and the I did an estimate too so that's it anyway I'm gonna get off here I feel really really good I feel nice and hydrated I'm really hungry so I am going to get this fuel and all that traffic going through Loganville I can't stand going to Loganville at rush hour Especially when this Grayson Highway dumps from two lanes on each side to one lane on each side. Because Walton County is too cheap, I guess, to finish this maybe mile or mile and a half worth of street to hit 78. Just keep it four lanes. Dumb. Because it's all four lanes in Gwinnett. All right, well, anyway, guys, thank you very much for kind of hanging out with me quasi on this journey of heat. If it will if it gets up to 99 or whatever like it's supposed to a couple of days uh, this week, then I may do another video. But, yeah, try that. If you haven't tried this Gatorade Fit or if you've tried it, if you like it, uh, leave it down in the comments. It's really, it tastes really good. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.